It's 51 hours into the six days at the fair. Well, the race is called three days at the fair, but the six day race started 51 hours ago. This is the Andy Noise Experience, a podcast endurance noise and random musings, giving you an update of 51 hours at the three days of the fair. Six day race. Amy Maurer, 51 from Seattle, Washington, is at 198 miles. And amazingly, Phil Eberts from Pennsylvania is also at 198 miles. They've been pretty much neck and neck most of the race. In fact, you look at their average pace and it's 1520.955 for Phil and 1521.785 for Amy. So after almost 200 miles, they're only one second off on pace. Pretty impressive. They're definitely running along pretty well. And they're going to be, you know, they're at two days, two uh, three hours. And uh, second place in the women is Glenda Hernandez, the youngster, 26. That's super young for these multi-day races. Indianapolis, Indiana, she's at 130 miles. Third is Darlene Cress, Indian Trails, North Carolina, 57 years. That's how old I am. And she's at 129. In the men, it's Phil at, Ebers at uh, 198. Jim Cook is at 137. He's 55 from Pennsylvania. Gary Ferguson is also from Pennsylvania. And he's at 125 miles. My buddy Bill Heldebrin, 74, from Florida. He's with 105 this morning. Looks like he's been on a break for quite a while. Um, he took a three-hour. His last mile was three hours, so he took a nice little break. Good to see that. Always like to see him taking some time off. And then Marvin Skagerberg, 82, from Colorado, has gotten to 73 miles. So congratulations to all of them. In the 48-hour race, there um, was uh, one guy in it yesterday, of course, Camille Heron and Bob Hurd are going to be starting up later this week. Um, there's a 72-hour runner. Um, I know that the Jester's supposedly flying out there to do the 72, but right now Amy Stoker from Connecticut is at uh, just three miles, so she just got going, I guess. And then there's some quad one. I'm not sure what a quad is, maybe four marathons. So a really good website. It's live at the fair.com. They have some really excellent up-to-date times. I wish they had the lap times, but from what I can tell, you can't click on them like Mike Melton and get all the lap times. So that's some of the news. Then, of course, more endurance news daily. Um, their Outside Magazine kind of published an article. Kind of interesting. Then it's talking from way back when um, women you know, weren't allowed to run marathons for quite some time. And then, of course, Catherine Switzer finally was the first woman to run at Boston, even though she, uh, you know, got assaulted on the course. But one thing that got lost in history was this lady named Maureen Marcusco. Achievement was underappreciated from the very beginning due to her young age. Instead of being called a record, it was dubbed a world's best performance and quickly forgotten. It says, um, basically... She was 13 and ran her first marathon, stepped out of notice onto the unpaved Eastern Canadian Marathon course. Or perhaps she got lost in the headlines because two weeks earlier, Catherine Switzer became the first woman to officially enter and run the Boston Marathon. And, of course, uh, Mancusco broke the world record by four minutes. She was 13 years old, ran 315, breaking the record of 319 by New Zealand's Millard Thompson in 64. So, you know, granted that was 50-plus years ago. Uh, but a million is running now. I mean, the world record now is 214. And that might be getting broken. I'm going to talk about some more record running performances coming up, of course, with the London Marathon. But it's interesting just to look back at that. Um, Jonathan Galt says that he's been trading emails with Ryan Hall ahead of the London Marathon this weekend. And it says that Sarah's best buildup ever. I know she is in PR shape, no bad about it. A PR would be really special coming off this COVID season. And it says here, you know, Sarah is number six on the all-time list of American marathoners. You know, she ran that spectacular race in Berlin. I'm trying to look here. My eyesight, 222 is what she ran. So, um, <clears throat> talking about uh, shoes, of course, because when we start talking marathons, the Alpha Nikes have definitely been uh, killing it. And um, it says, uh, introducing Nikes Alfly N% percent Kenya that is... Kipchoge will wear for the London Marathon on Sunday. Nike is a running company. Kenya is in a running country. EK is a running legend. That's why the shoe has adopted the Kenyan flag. Some really good looking shoes. You can see them on my website. They're in the show notes. Uh, but yeah, he's going to be wearing those. Um, they're the uh, red and green, of course. So it should be fun to watch that. London Marathon is following a 19 lap course. 
and I this person Alex Hutchinson from Sweat Science really good website he says questions about the turns looking back at um, the analysis of the Vienna Ineos course where uh, he broke sub he went under two minutes they calculated half a second slowdown from these curves so not too much to worry about and so that's definitely interesting um, uh, another uh, London Marathon says that um, unfortunately two athletes did uh, an athlete and a coach did po test positive COVID it says London Marathon race director Hugh Brazier announces two positive COVID tests before Sunday's race athlete um, Dejito Azara and her coach both tested positive in pre-travel tests in Ethiopia so did not join the race bubble so that's kind of unfortunate test here um Bekele on his shoe choice for the London Marathon. He says Vapor Fly, not the Alpha Fly. A little bit with Alpha Fly, I've had some problems. I need some time to adapt. Kipchoge says he will be wearing the Alpha Fly next percent. So that should be a really great race. Looking forward to watching it. And then speaking of other races that are coming up in this fall, um, I guess they're going to um, have uh, these races look ridiculous. Way better than a typical World Marathon major. Um, you're going to have the Valencia Marathon coming up in uh, December, and you're going to have uh, you know, the Tokyo champ who ran 202, the Boston Chicago champ, and then a world champ in the men's marathon, Legacy, Chirono, and Desi. And then three women under 219 and three more under 220 plus. Uh, Jordan Hase is going to go to this race, so that should be good. Of course, there is the race here in the United States. Um, they're going to have out in Arizona where uh, the field is getting built, built. But they don't really have a whole lot of money for the race. In fact, the athletes themselves have to pay like $150 entry fee, which is kind of interesting. Um, I wrote the race director saying they should do like they used to do in the six-day races where they gave the athletes the door money. And I think we should do some crowdfunding and raise money for these races and then give the money to the athletes and base it on like first place gets a certain percentage, but then anybody who breaks a certain time should get money because that's what they used to do in the six-day races. Back in the day, they gave the door to the uh, athletes. So first would get like 40%, second would get 20 and then the rest of the 40%, kind of like in a bad beat jackpot, you get a table share. Um, basically, anyone who went over 450 miles got – part of that 40 percent now what i've suggested like in a six-day race like i've told joe fegis like say okay we have to get two-thirds of whatever you do so if you do 600 we do 400 anybody who does over 400 gets a percentage of the pot that would give joe incentive to go even further so he might be able to take all the money so basically they're saying incredible field announced for the valencia marathon outstanding half marathon also they're going to have a half marathon there and um <clears throat> it says, you know, and that's just the marathon. The half marathons are also loaded with debuts from Kip Durant and Gade. Gade, I remember watching in the World Championships, phenomenal athlete. Circle December 6th on your calendar right now because these will be races worth getting up early for. And then there's some more news, great news with road running. It says World Athletics announces 2023 will be the first year for the World Athletics Road Running Championships. About time. Featuring championship races in the half marathon, 5K, and potentially a road mile. Road mile would be really cool. Mass races will also be held alongside the elites for more people to get involved. <laughs> That's if we get this COVID under control. And uh, that will definitely be pretty exciting to see. Um, then uh, it says that, so if you're keeping track of all the events that are coming up, 1992 to 2005, we had the World Half Marathon Championships. Then 2006 to 2007, we had World Road Running Championships. 2008 to 2022, it was world athletics half marathon and now we're back to like 2006 world athletics road running championships so pretty exciting um says that um that uh the cross country in 2021 of course has been moved was 2021 21 cross country in australia is postponed till 2022 due to the coronavirus yeah because cross country is always like held in February or March, which is interesting now. The NCAA is going to hold it then, but that's when the worlds have always been. It says World Athletics also says World Cross Country will be moved from odd years to even years in 2024 to align with the Olympics. Of course, there's been a push to try and get the uh, cross country back in the Olympics, and I really wish it would. It would be really fun to watch um, have the cross country in it. And it's been in it way back in the day. I know Pavo Nermi led Finland to a cross country title. I think it was like super hot and miserable that day too. And so that's kind of some good news. And then here talking about the um, 
Arizona um, Marathon in December. It says we now have 10 of the top 20 finishers from the 2020 men's trials coming to the Marathon Project. This includes fifth place Augusto Mayo. Uh, the Alabama alum is part of the U.S. Army and was fourth at the 2019 Games, so he's going to be running. And then last thing here on Endurance Noise Daily is <laughs> California. There are no cross-country meets, but it looks like some of the California kids are heading to Arizona. It says, Rich Gonzalez says, we're finally getting underway for cross-country season this weekend. Well, sort of. Several top runners and squads competing as clubs are crossing state lines this weekend for the Desert Twilight Festival in Arizona. Uh, Newberry Parks boys are heading that way, and he has a review of the race. And have been doing an excellent um, Newberry Park versus um, Great Oak 2019 season. is on YouTube. And it's in conjunction with Prep Cal Track and HD Runners. And I highly recommend watching it. Um, even if you're not a cross-country fan, you will be after watching these documentaries. A really white, great way to watch and see excellence. So that is Endurance News Daily. Stay healthy. Be boring. Not epic. <laughs>